Women's basketball looks to rebound after a big loss against Purdue. Men's basketball looks to add to the win column as they face Purdue this weekend. And volleyball is also looking to rebound against Toledo tonight after a close loss to Eastern Michigan. Grab your drinks, grab your popcorn, because this is Cardinal Sports Live, and it starts right now. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Cardinal Sports Live. Alongside William Hatzel and Augie Wiese, I'm your host, Yash Padi. Now it's uh, starting to get cold outside, guys, uh, and it's, we're, we're getting some chances of snow tomorrow. So do you guys, are you guys excited for the snow, and what do you guys normally do on a snowy day? Well, if it actually does snow, mm -hmm. I really I kind of hope it does, because uh, I haven't been in a snowball fight in a while, and that'd be uh, kind of fun. So yeah. throw it back a little bit. I'd oh, like that. bring trip down memory lane? Yep. How about you, uh, Will? Hey, I'd be down for a <laughs> campus-wide snowball fight if, uh, if we ever get that much. I know we might only get a little bit, yeah. but yeah. I guess I could deal with the snow. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a snow guy for, like, the holidays, and that's it. After January, forget mm -hmm. it. But yeah. it is kind of exciting to know the holidays and snow is coming, so yeah. I'm okay with a little bit, not too yeah. much. And who am I kidding? I can't be inside on the snow day and, s and stay warm and drink a hot cup of hot chocolate. I got too much homework and final projects to do, so yeah. there's Definitely. no such thing as relaxing, whether Absolutely. it's a snow yeah. day or not. So. Yeah. Well, uh, in two weeks, I'll be going home in Knoxville, so it doesn't snow down there. So uh, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be in the, I'll be in a little warmth, not too, much, not too much warmer down there, but I'll be in a little warmth, but it'll be tough coming back and coming back into the snow and, and winter weather. But we'll be talking, we'll have a big show today. We'll be talking some men's basketball, women's basketball, and then volleyball. But we'll start off with men's basketball. And the, the men's basketball team, they beat Indiana State on Tuesday, 86-69, to 69, but they started off slow and... Uh, the Cardinals only shot 38% in that first half, uh, but they picked it up in the second half shooting 58% uh, from the floor, and the three-point shooting also improved considerably in that second half, which essentially allowed the team to secure the first victory of the season. So, Augie, I come to you. What were the strengths in this, in this Cardinals team in that game? Um, what really stuck out to me was uh, defensively we rebounded really well. Bracken Hazen was one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Rebounding-wise, he had nine rebounds. Uh, Tajay Teague was another big one. Um, not rebounding, excuse me, on the perimeter was mm -hmm. a strength of ours as well. And Tajay Teague had a really big game. He had two steals. He had four fast break points, mm -hmm. uh, four easy points off turnovers. And mm -hmm. then uh, our transition offense was really impressive, which also helps off the turnovers. We had 18 points in transition offense. And then uh, we, were really, uh, we were a lot better finishing the paint. We had 42 points. So mm -hmm. three things really impressive. Definitely. How about you, Will? I mean, I was really impressed with the starting five of Persons, Walton, Mallers, Teague, and Hazen. Hazen. All five of these guys, well, four out of the five scored in double digits. You had Teague leading the team with 21 points, seven rebounds. Uh, Mallers did get seven rebounds, wh which was pretty good, too. And then, again, the new uh, guard combination of Persons and Walton. Persons, 16 points. Walton, 15. And new guy, Brecken Hazen, 15 points and, and nine rebounds. So in his first game in a Ball State uniform, uh, one rebound shy of a double-double, so that was pretty impressive. And just overall, like you said, Yash, just the scoring, especially in, in the second half, they really improved. They felt like they got uh, more aggressive in the second half. You saw 18 fast break points. You saw 24 second chance points. So mm -hmm. this team never gave up. They got rebounds, and, you know, they just put it back up. You know, uh, Walton had that uh, soaring in the sky put back <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. dunk, which was really cool to see. That highlight's been floating around social media for sure. So, mm, uh, got, I, like I said, this team was led by the starting five, and just everything went right almost for them. And I think one stat that uh, we didn't mention was Trey Moses had four key blocks in that game. Uh, and obviously he had three fouls, but he had four blocks that really helped this team. And I believe he's the, the sixth uh, player in school history now to record 100 blocks or more, so mm -hmm. congratulations mm -hmm. yep. to Trey on that. That's oh, yeah. a very definitely. good accompl accomplishment there. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. But, uh, again, it was tied going into halftime, similar to that UND exhibition game last week. Uh, which players stood out to you in that second half? I know we mentioned a couple, Bracken Hazen, uh, Kyle Mallers, but which players really stood out to you in that second half against Indiana State? I think Tajay Teague was another big one because what he could do on the boards, how he could match up with bigger guys mm -hmm. as well as defend on the perimeter, I think was huge. I think that... 
I think that gave Moses and even Bracken Hazen at points a time to rest, and that was that was really big. Obviously, Hazen, we talk about him, mm -hmm. the nine big rebounds, 15 <laughs> points, who's 66 from the field. That was huge for his first game. Definitely. And then, obviously, uh, K.J. Walton, what was another big one? It was nice to see him get 15 points in his first game. Mm -hmm. So those are three big guys for me. Definitely. How about you, Will? Yeah, I have to bring up Walton, too. Again, kind of a quiet first half, didn't get many touches with the ball, or even when he did, he just couldn't seem to really get anything going offensively, so he ended up. Uh, passing it a lot, but I think he finally got comfortable, got used to the system, playing with his new teammates finally. Yeah. Uh, so we saw a lot more offense coming out of him. And even, and then Bracken Hazen, too, he kind of uh, found his own role when he got back into this game, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the second half. And I, what I love about him, he's the Taylor, he's the for, forward version of Taylor Persons, just the high motor, high personality. I really like the way he was pumping up the crowd, especially mm -hmm. the, uh, the students in the, yeah. in the NASA student section. Yeah. section. Mm -hmm. So. Just like Taylor Persons, any, anytime something big happens, he's always there to motivate the crowd, pump up his, his uh, teammates. So uh, those two guys, the new guys, definitely doing a lot, and uh, they really found their own in the second half, and I think that played uh, dividends for Ball State. Definitely. Absolutely. And now it's uh, clear that this team, there's uh, chemistry on the court. So, uh, Will, I'll come to you first. How does that, pro how does that ba balance on the roster uh, balance everything out? I mean, you got a lot of returning players from last year. I mean, you look at Persons, Tajay Teague, Trey Moses, just to name a few. Kyle Mallers comes back for his third year. You got second year guys, mm -hmm. the Ish Elamine and Zach Gunn. So uh, you got these uh, new guys, these transfers, but you, a lot of your core is is back and has been around for at least one or two seasons, maybe three or four, especially seniors mm -hmm. like Trey Moses. So the camaraderie is there, the chemistry is high. But then you add these new guys into the mix. I just I think the the depth is great. You know, oh, yeah. uh, Walton is the perfect pair uh, pairing with. Uh, with persons right now, they're kind of your main offensive production guys as far as guards go. But mm -hmm. you put Alameen and, and Josh Thompson out there, maybe not known as much for their offense, but they definitely provide some good defense. And they're not afraid to shoot, though, either, mm -hmm. if they get the opportunity. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. they, they might surprise you with a couple of baskets themselves. And then it's like forward galore right now mm. for Coach Whitford. I mean, you yeah. got Moses and Teague, who I always say are one of the best big men duo in the MAC conference, and then you add in Bracken Hazen, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of other younger guys coming up, Blake Huggins. I'm looking forward to seeing what he could do when mm -hmm. he gets more playing time. Definitely. And, you know, just these big guys, they're just forces in the paint, both offensively and defensively. They could score, play really good defense, and they could get the rebounds. So it's, there's a nice combination of, uh, a nice combination of different guys with a lot of different skill sets. So it uh, gives Coach Whitford a lot to work with, which is good because you can always throw out different line lineup combinations out there and always keep your opponents guessing so mm -hmm. definitely Augie no, I'm definitely gonna agree with you Will we uh I th really we, if you think about it, we have a 10 deep lineup there's only two guys which are true freshmen that don't play that much that well besides uh, oh Huggins too I guess but uh no, nothing it's Huggins uh, that was not yeah I just thought He's they were both freshmen guy, yeah guy, I thought, they're both, I thought they're both freshmen he'll get there but um yeah so we get a, te a 10 deep line so it's really nice to have that much depth and the different combinations you can use with those. And then I'll echo you too with the big men. There's so many different like lineups we can use. We can even have Teague as a five as a center, and that's that's nice because that's and that echoes that 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 just shows his dev uh, his uh, development develop no nah, uh, versatility. I'm versatility, sorry. Was, no. good. Yeah, uh, versatility. So it really shows his versatility of how he can guard the perimeter, guard down low. So that's huge. And then we have we have better guards now with Walton. We have a guy that's a true slasher right off the bat. It's nice to see him with what he can do. And then it's nice that we can also play small ball. So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. definitely, it's definitely, definitely. Well, uh, I caught up with Taylor Persons earlier this week, and this is what he had to say about the team chemistry. I love playing with this group. Um, realistic, they we all are on the same page, and there's no last year and the year before it's been like bickering a little bit. That's not how it is this year, man. Um, we're just going to stay together, and we're going to we're going to play our game and be all in for each other. That's the most important thing. And you know, after finally getting to see some of these transfers play, and I know we've mentioned a couple of them, Bracken Hazen, uh, KJ Walton already, but how critical are they to the team's success, and how big of an impact can they have moving forward? Do you think, Augie? I'll start with you. Well, I think Hazen, obviously, it's, he's huge off the glass, and he's huge down low. He can also stretch the floor. He had a three. Mm -hmm. um, later in the game so that was really nice to see that we we haven't really had that in the past big men that can stretch the floor mm -hmm. so that's nice and then also obviously they provide more depth that's the obvious thing but with Walton it's nice it's really it's honestly nice that we have two guys right off the bat that can come into a starting role off bigger schools Definitely. and then they have more experience and then that just adds more to the athleticism of our team mm -hmm. how about you Will 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I talk about depth all the time, but it, you got to go beyond that, too, is that these guys make legitimate impacts. They can definitely play. They could get out there. Hazen's mm -hmm. going to be key because Trey Moses coming back from uh, injury still off season surgery. He's got to get uh, get healthy still, so he's not going to play a lot of minutes. So Hazen's going to get a lot of time out there and just a lot of guys uh, that, again, they're, they're out here making instant impacts, which is really nice. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to lead to a lot of success because a lot of new guys, along with what we already have, it's just going to be a great combination. Definitely, definitely. Well, now this team will look ahead to face Purdue on Saturday in West Lafayette. And I, I spoke to Coach Whitford, and here's what he had to say about the upcoming matchup against the Boilermakers. The way they pressure the ball and uh, their kind of identity as being a blue-collar, hard-working, man-to-man defensive team that's really hard to play against. And, uh, and I think it'll be a great challenge for us. So Coach Whitford, he talked about the defensive aggressiveness in that soundbite, uh, and that's what that Purdue team brings. But are there any specific players, and Will, I'll start with you on this one, that the Ball State team needs to look out for on that Purdue roster? Uh, definitely. First one's Carson Edwards. You know, he's one of the best players you're going to come up against uh, this season, especially mm -hmm. with some big games coming up this season uh, later on, whether it's MAC opponents or some ranked opponents. Uh, again, just uh, quickly, you know, we play Evansville in a few weeks, Loyola of Chicago, Toledo, uh, number 15, Virginia Tech. So that's the second uh, big mm -hmm. you know, top 25 opponent we're going to play. Yeah. And so, I mean, really, the, Carson Edwards is the kind of player you're going to come up against and a few of these other teams that we play against later on in the season. So, Good to kind of get a really good test right now. Uh, he, and he dropped 30 against Fairfield a couple nights ago in their home opener. Mm -hmm. And then you got Grady Eifert and Matt Harms, both uh, key rebounders for this team. They combined for 18 rebounds, which is half of the rebounds Purdue got the other night. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely our big guys in the paint are going to have a lot to uh, work with. It. You know, They're going to have to work cut out for them against these guys. So those would be my top three Purdue players to watch out for. Definitely. How, any players to watch out for on that roster? For I'm you? Okay, I'm actually going to go with Ryan Klein. Mm -hmm. I think he's really developed. This is it's really it's going to be interesting how he is. He's a he's a sharpshooter, so he's a spot up three shooter. Mm -hmm. But it's really going to be interesting how he comes into the starting role and has more of a more of a production. He has thir he had 13 points against Fairfield, and it's going to be really interesting to see how how we defend the three against him because he's he's lethal. Definitely, definitely. Well, uh, we're going to have to take a time out here, and when we come back, we're still going to stay on the court, but we switching up to the women's team, and we'll talk some Ball State women's hoops after the break. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Live. And now we're going to turn our attention to the women's basketball team. And the women, they took a big loss against Purdue last night with the final score being 38 to 80. Uh, they shot one from 14 from three-point land. Uh, they got out-rebounded by 19. Uh, the, point, the rebound differential was 19. They, Purdue had 51. Uh, Ball State only had 32. Uh, seven from 18 from free throws. And free throws and layups are kind of those easy buckets you can get uh, in a basketball game, and you know, Ball State wasn't able to to get any of that going. And again, ball, um, basketball is a game of momentum, and Purdue had all the momentum coming into the game, and they kind of controlled that momentum throughout the game. And, and Ball State wasn't really able to to do much. And so, uh, I want to turn to you, Will, and and kind of uh, ask, 
what are the aspects of the game that the Cardinals need to focus on before they play Cleveland State? Well, you got to play better defense and you got to do better rebounding. I mean, that's that's key. You know, if you mm -hmm. make more defensive stops, you don't have such a big scoring differential differential that you got to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, you got to find the way to be more efficient offensively as well. Definitely. Making one three, shooting uh, seven percent from three point land. Yeah. That's not good. Going one for fourteen. Maybe if the, maybe they should have took less if they realized that it just wasn't their night for shooting threes. Mm -hmm. um, and again, yeah, thirty eight points is. You know, it's not going to cut. It's not going to win a collegiate game. So, and only having two players scoring in double digits, uh, they got to got to see a little bit more from the starting five. Got to make more of an impact. And just the slow start killed them, being down 11 at the end of the first quarter. So, uh, it just a really slow, sluggish start that continued from beginning to end for both uh, both sides of the ball, really for offense and defense mm -hmm. for this team. So, uh, very disappointing night. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, limiting turnovers is kind of an obvious one. 22. Uh, 22 turnovers the whole game. If you have that many turnovers, that's way more fast break opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, more numbers opportunities for them. So definitely have to cut down on the turnovers. Uh, and also, I really think deck off will a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We need to get at least two more, like more than just two people on our whole team even yeah. uh, in double in double figures. I think we really need to get ja Jasmine Sam's going. I was very disappointed performance, one of nine, only three points th throughout the whole night. So I think we really need to get our starting five more acclimated. And then obviously we have to shoot better. Rebounding is also a huge issue. 52 mm -hmm. rebounds, uh, 21 offensively. That's way too many offensively. So yeah. definitely have to get better on the boards. Definitely. And obviously uh, we got to address the elephant in the room here. No Carmen Grande, no Destin Washington uh, this year. And they were the leaders on that team last season. So uh, Augie, I'll start with you on this one. Who do you expect to fill that leadership role uh, that Destiny and Carmen shared last year? Is it Jasmine? Is it Ashlyn Brown who had a big season, breakout season last year mm -hmm. coming into this year? Who do you see filling out that role? I expect Jasmine Sams, even though she obviously very disappointing performance first game, but mm -hmm. I, ex I expect her to bounce back, play a, obviously a big re leadership role. And then Nakaya Penny, mm -hmm. she had 13 points. She's really the o one of the only bright spots. So I expect those two to really fill the shoes. Definitely. Will, uh, who do you expect to fill that leadership board? Uh, I agree with Sams. I think she'll definitely be one of the better guards this year, especially offensively. Uh, again, yeah, only three points against Purdue. First game, you're just trying to get back in, in the grind, so, you know, mm -hmm. we could let that slide. Uh, she averaged 11 points last year, two assists, three rebounds. Uh, she did have a team high uh, three point shooting percentage of 39.5%, so it'd mm -hmm. be nice if she can bring that back this year, add that three point element to the offense. 75% mm -hmm. uh, uh, free throw shooting, which was uh, one of the best on the team mm -hmm. this year or so. And then Ashlyn Brown, she l had led the team last year in rebounds with seven and a half, so. If she could be the next person to, to rebound and maybe uh, average a few more points, she averaged eight last year. So, again, needing another double-digit uh, scoring uh, player will be key. So I think Sams and Brown could be two players to really step up this year. Definitely, definitely. And now looking ahead to Sunday, they'll get a couple days off before they play Cleveland State. So who do you see on that Cleveland State roster that the Cardinals really need to watch out for? I think Jade Ely and Mariah Miller, 7.9, uh, 5.6 points per game perspective. Uh, respectively, they're the really two new come. They're a relatively new team. They got six new players, so mm -hmm. I think the backcourt something we have to watch out for. Definitely will. Yeah, Mariah Miller, huge double double, 22 points, 17 rebounds, and then Jemiah Braxton coming off the bench. She had 13 points, four rebounds, and five assists in their season opener. So uh, a lot of scoring to go around that starting five and even that bench. So uh, Cleveland State dropped 113 points in their first game. So mm -hmm. it's going to be another. Uh, defensive challenge for Ball State in this one over the weekend. Definitely. Well, uh, we'll take another time out here, and after the break, we'll be back on the court, but we'll be serving up the scoop on Ball State women's volleyball as they prepare to head into the MAC tournament. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. It's been so amazing to be able to give our child the life that we kind of pictured us having, even though we didn't really have that. I've been in foster care my whole life. He's so strong to just be able to like leave that all behind and still be able to take care of his daughter and be a good husband. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> this not be real. I could not have done it alone. We've been through so much in our life, and he never used that as an excuse, but as motivation to do better. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. 
Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me, now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me, I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Live, and now we're going to switch gears from basketball, and we'll be talking some Ball State women's volleyball, and they're playing Toledo right now. They're up one set to nothing, winning the first set 25 to 15, and they're uh, up in that second set 21 to 18 right now, and uh, it's almost getting, you know, speaking of uh, Toledo and moving forward, it's almost getting to that time of the season, uh, the end of the regular season for the Ball State women's program with just two more regular season games left, and uh, what will this Cardinals team need to be able to do to clinch that number one seed in the MAC tournament? Really not overlooking anyone, because if you look at it, Toledo, come, they just lost, a, well, first of all, they just lost a 4-10 and in conference, bad Central mm -hmm. Michigan team. Mm -hmm. um, Toledo comes in at 1-9 and on the road, lost three in a row, so we can't overlook them. And then Akron's lost five in a row, but, you know, we can't lose focus. We're, pr we're a pretty average team at home, so, mm -hmm. but uh, especially with these two teams that are pretty bad on the road this year, we just got to finish up strong and not overlook anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, what, what does the Cardinals need to do to, I mean, they are the, they, they're leading the West Division right now. They're the number one seed in the West. But what do they need to do to, uh, you know, clinch that number one overall seed in the MAC tournament? Oh, yeah, I mean, they've been a great team. However, they got to really get going here again and bounce back from those last two losses. And to do that, uh, like head coach Kelly Miller said, you just got to play consistent again. You got to get back to focusing and uh, uh, focusing and being consistent in your play, you know, every set every serve, every game, so I mean, especially now that you're in a high-pressure situation where you have to win these last two games uh, in order to get a share of the MAC title. You know, they're not going to mm -hmm. yeah. win it completely. Yeah. They're having yeah. to share with someone, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you got to do, you got to play your last two games and, and worry about that. You know, part of their fate relies on uh, Bowling Green losing one or two of their matchups and then Miami losing out in their final two games. You can't worry about that, but you, get, you can worry about and focus on and can uh, to have in your control is win these last two games of the season, uh, come out strong over the weekend against Akron on senior night, and, and play really well. So, uh, again, part of their fate is in their hands, and you just control what you can control. Definitely. And scouting the opposition now, uh, what are some things that this team needs to keep an eye out? They, they're playing Toledo right now. They are a couple games in the weekend. So what are some uh, things that this team needs to keep an eye out uh, for during the weekend? So for Toledo, uh, Chloe Cleesby, she has 303 kills, which is just absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. So they got to keep her in check. Uh, Zoe Burnbridge, or Birch Rich, Burnbridge, my bad, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Burnbridge has 274 <laughs> kills. And then uh, for Akron, Kaylin, or Kayla Guads, uh, 158 kills. And then Ashley Richardson, 122 kills. I think those are two really big players for Akron. Mm -hmm. uh, Will? Yeah, this Toledo game should definitely be an easy game for the mm -hmm. team to bounce back defensively. Uh, they rank 11th in the MAC in attack percentage, so they're near the very bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, the Akron game, I mean, Akron's on a five-game losing streak. I mean, you kind of try to kick them while they're down, yeah. per se. And they're last in the MAC in both digs and blocks. So, again, you're playing these struggling teams. you got to take advantage of it and try to get the wins here. Definitely. And right now, Ball State's up on Toledo. Uh, like I said, the, they won the first and second set. So, uh, how do you see this, this weekend going for them? Like, they're already up against Toledo. Uh, looking like they're going to win that game, but how do you see the uh, the weekend going against Akron? You know what? I'm feeling pretty confident. I think we're going to beat Akron. I think it'll be a close one, but I think we beat Toledo tonight, beat Akron, feeling positive. I think we're going to get a share of that MAC title. Definitely. Uh, I you, agree. Um, I think they should they should have no problem finishing out Toledo. It looks like they're almost up two sets already. Mm -hmm. And then um, Akron, I can see that. Now, I can see it being a little bit more of a challenge, but I, I, I totally expect us to win these next two games. Definitely. But... Uh, we'll take a time out here again, and when we come back, we'll head into our final segment of the day, game time. After the
Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. See on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously, Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So, I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports Live. Uh, you know what time it is. It's game time, everybody. And today I'm going to switch it up a little bit uh, on you guys. And since we talked both men's and women's basketball tonight, uh, I'm wondering if you guys were in the starting lineup for this uh, Ball State team, what position would you play? Augie, I'll start with you. Well, I could see myself being a wing, like mm. a 6'4", 6'5". So I could see myself being like a wing, maybe a, maybe a shooting guard. Uh -huh. I'm not that, not that good of a spot-up shooter. Um, if we're being honest here, if you leave me wide open, I'll shoot it. But I'm more of a I'm more of a slasher, and then I'm more of a slasher, and then on top of that, mm -hmm. I'm more of like defensive oriented. So I can uh. I can see myself being like a scrapper, somebody just going after loose balls, some some more like defensive minded. I could. I like to say I like to think of myself as like a Kawhi, ah. some somebody like that. <laughs> okay. I see. I somebody see. like that. So somebody that can lock, lock you down, give you the clamps. You can dunk um, too. I've seen you at the rec. So I can. Uh, I can yeah. dunk. I, <laughs> I still. I still. Still have a little juice back in the legs. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's always positive. So exactly. yeah, I can. I can definitely do that. I can get out on the fast break. Run the offense a little bit if you really need me to. But mm -hmm. not one of my strong suits. But I can. I can definitely see myself absolutely being like a. Being somebody that's like a slasher, maybe maybe in a spot up shooter from time to time, but definitely a slasher. Definitely. So. Well, what well what uh, what position are you going for? Going for? Uh, probably point guard. It's always been a favorite position of mine. I like being the the guy that's the floor general that can mm -hmm. you know I've always admired watching Taylor mm -hmm. Persons, mm -hmm. uh, NBA mm -hmm. players like Russell Westbrook, uh, Derrick Rose, especially as a Bulls fan watching him in his MVP time mm -hmm. in Chicago was really cool. Um, not really the greatest. Uh, Shooter, uh, and again, being five six, you know, it's not like I could really, you know, yeah. get in there and dunk or anything like that. But hey, you know, I kind of consider myself a combination of Rajon Rondo and Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's defense and Rajon Rondo's passing. You know, I try to make plays, drop the dimes, and then I pride myself in defense. I'll, you know, I'm not afraid to go up against anyone, even if they're taller than me, and try yeah. to steal the ball or whatever. So definitely, mm -hmm. kind of feel like I'm a point guard that's not necessarily a big time scorer. But, you know, hey, you know, it doesn't mean I don't try to be like Persons or Derrick Rose and try to <laughs> drive into the paint, oh, yeah. do some kind of move mm -hmm. and try to get up a layup. So mm -hmm. sometimes it works. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, su I surprise uh, the op my opponents sometimes. I, I, I make my random three for the night, and then I'm there good, you, go. you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I might win the game or get the lead once in a while. So yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, but, yeah. How about you, Josh? Definitely. Uh, I've been compared to Matthew Delvadova. Oh. So uh, I'm going to say either point guard <laughs> or shooting guard. Uh, I'd like to shoot the ball. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I just, you know, whenever, whenever I get the ball, I'm trying to, trying to look for screens, run that pick and roll, pick and mm. roll offense, and trying to just, just shoot. Uh, you have the highest arc in your oh, shot yeah. that I've ever seen in a person. Definitely, definitely. I, I've been trying mm. to, over the last four years, I've been trying to kind of uh, lower the, the arc on the shot, but that's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's work in progress. But that's, that's all the time we have for tonight's show. Uh, another thank you to my two analysts, Augie Weesey, William Hatzel, and for everyone behind the scenes, a big thank you to all you guys that work hard to make this show possible. And I'm Yash Padi. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Cardinal Sports Live. Be sure to give us a follow at BSU underscore CSL on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. From all of us here at CSL, have a great evening. <laughs>